Hello, my Lickens. Welcome to another episode of Ants Morning, the podcast that started being a newsletter and now it's both because I'm extra. Today's episode is titled Bucolic Gothic Punk, and you'll know why in a bit. The first section today is titled Inhaling with the Beasts and basically I wanted to show you a fragment of one of the poems I wrote recently during Neil Hirborn's writing circle and I wanted to apply what Cory and Circle Peer um, told us about inhale poems um, I I love this this concept basically um, most poems are exhale poems so the ones in which you let out what you need to complain about or what's hurting you um, what you need to protest about um, you know and inhale poems would be the ones that give you the space and peace to take a breath, metaphorically. So, um, if you remember my last episode, I ranted a lot <laughs> about um, last elections here in my city, Valladolid. Um, yeah, I don't want to... Um, descend into that um, spirit uh, today again, but um, the mayor <laughs> is about to... I'm, I'm having those kind of laughs that it's more um, about frustration and, and anger than um, actual enjoyment. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, he's about to kill about 50 trees so they can build a cycle lane a few meters away from the circle lane that's already there. Uh, and the reason why is because, and I quote, those trees are not elegant enough. Yeah. That's that's what the fucker said. Uh, so yes, let me read you a fragment of the poem I wrote about that, while also trying to um, write an inhale poem. It, it was it was a balancing act. <laughs> the path from my house to the library, a four-way road. Yes. But the trees, the new mayor is threatening to kill because they are not of enough elegance. As if beasts needed of a human's approval, much less a politician's. So, this is one of the poems I very recently sent to a literary magazine named Alocasia, which is a type of plant. Um, it's one of those things... Um, when I discovered them, I was like, why didn't I know about this sooner? Because they only publish queer authors and the main topic of the poems has to be plants. I mean, uh, it makes sense for me to be published there, right? <laughs> no, seriously, I love what they select. Um, now just fingers crossed and I hope they like at least one of my poems. So, next section. Teenage Peacocks, the Daily News. This is basically what I've been up to. Um, so, um, I've been spending some mornings these last few weeks in one of those places, um, if I were a celebrity, a celebrity I wouldn't name because it would get crowded the next day, but alas, poor Yorick, I am not such a thing. 
So it's the Campo Grande library in Valladolid, whatever. <laughs> Campo Grande is literally big field, um, but it's more of a city park, bigger than most around here, and has gorgeous trees and animal species you can't see daily around here either, at least. And it has a library inside. Um, it's tiny, only opens in the summer, and there's always old men reading the paper, sometimes while whispering the news to themselves. <laughs> and it's kind of cute, and not as hot as the street or my house. Um, yes, I'm an artist with no air conditioning on her house. Mon dieu, uh, quelle surprise! Also, when you look out the window, you may catch a lady peacock strolling around with her teenage younglings, which it, it just um, makes me all mushy inside. Um, yes. <laughs> and it smells of green, and sometimes they are loud kids, but uh, I cannot get angry at them because uh, they... Um, the Keith, Keith book section, the children's book <laughs> section. It's uh, pretty exciting and I would be excited if I was a kid there, so whatever. Uh, so, what have I been doing exactly there? Well, I edited a lot of poems I written last few months in Neil Circle, I sent a good number of these poems to English writing magazines and I've also been preparing this third section, goth punk eco poetry. I know you need to take a breath before saying that, but I couldn't find a better title for it. So. <laughs> Yes, I'm offering a writing workshop of two and a half hour, hour session, so I'm repeating it twice so more people can attend. Uh, yes, <clears throat> this is my first time teaching a workshop and I'm a bit terrified and a bit excited, which is apt, I think. In the workshop I'll explain the, co the concept of goth punk eco poetry. I'll show example poems that could be ascribed to it, and I'll propose two writing exercises, of course um, not mandatory, and we will close with the reading of the poems we've just written, also not mandatory, but I think it would be really cool to read, read for each other and talk about our writing experience that day. So, uh, if you've been following me for a while, you may know by now I'm very much into poetry about ecology, environmentalism. Um, sorry, <laughs> if you're hearing some scratching no noises, they are my brother and sister-in-law's cats. Um, I'm cat sitting. Um, yeah, they're a bit loud. Sorry, but they are super super cute. Um, so uh, there's nothing I can do. <laughs> Yes, uh, so, um, yes, the thing is, I don't um, like most things that are labeled as eco-poetry because um, they, they absolutely lack any ecologist conscience and what, what the fuck? <laughs> How can you call something eco uh, if it's not... Um, ecologist or um, has any um, environmental spirit in it at all. Um, and all this um, vibe of Mother Nature, um, I find it um, lacking, especially this um, feminization. Uh, I, I find it takes away everything non-human's agency. Um, and this whole deal of thinking about nature, another concept I don't enjoy, <laughs> nature as something that is not part of us and something we're not a part of, 
uh, and we are, you know. Mm, yes, uh, I'll try not to get super philosophical, but yeah, I don't like that distinction between human and nature, whatever. So, <laughs> in the workshop, I'll get deeper into this, but basically, I'll propose the attending writers to get a bit goth. That means to consider microorganisms that inhabit, inhabit us and talking about them with a sick fascination, giving ourselves permission to cry about the losses of habitats and species, that kind of thing. And I'll also ask them to invoke some punk spirit, which would be maybe literally cursing that owners, calling the orcas around Gibraltar to arms, or playing with social alternatives that can, that can be more balanced than the current structures in place, which shouldn't be that hard. <laughs> so that's basically it. For now, I have these two dates in English. August 21st, from 6 to 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, and September the 3rd from 1 to 3.30 p.m. ET also. But I'm planning a couple of Spanish sessions and one in a more Australian friendly time. Very soon, very soon. I created a poster for the workshop with... <laughs> That's the cat's food. Maybe you, you're hearing that. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> Yeah, so I I love the poster I created. It's basically one of my drawings. It's um, a fig that it's so ripe that it cracked open and it's um, like open to the sky. It's very cool. And I just altered the colors so it wouldn't be so green. Um, environmental cliche uh, imagery, you know? <laughs> yeah, uh, if you're interested, um, please attend. <laughs> I'm very excited to share my ideas and the poetry I've been selecting about this with you. And if not, um, I'd highly appreciate it if you could share the info around with whoever might want to come. Maybe you have an ecologist friend uh, or you have um, a punk uh, poet friend, uh, I don't know, <laughs> uh, or a goth cousin, why not? <laughs> so yeah, you can send them a link to my Instagram or a link to the inscription form. All the info is on the written version of the newsletter and, and yeah, all over my entire social media presence. <laughs> Facebook, Instagram, newsletter, and so on. Yeah, so I'm closing this off with the last section, which is about Gothic Bucolia, um, the third self-published poem collection by my circle friend Katia Maticek um, and this is the first author who also was a friend <laughs> I talked about in here in the newsletter so it's pretty special to be talking about them again and now with um, Gothic Bucolia which is um, Yes, uh, it's my favorite out of the three, and fuck, it's amazing. <laughs> so let me read you the, um, my favorite poem from it. It's titled Habituation by Katia Maticek. How is it that this 5 p.m. is darker this time around? Night that stares back. It's not that something lurks in the dark. I mean the night is the animal itself, somehow a primal, ancient and starless night awakens and grows hungry after sunset. The night lies dormant during the summer, 
planning its revenge in vacant presence. The night laughs at our aimless confusion when we point at it and ask, how is it different this time? Why is it this time? But we know how the night is deeper and breathing, leaning into its growl. It draws us in, whispers its confirmation at 5 p.m. I am so, because the days are dark as well, and I must win. Damn, every time, every time I read it, goosebumps everywhere. Um, I'm in awe at Katya for having written these three collections, and especially this one. I I think it shows how much she's how much she's grown as an author and I love how this one brings out everything abject and also everything luminous of the city and also this frightened fascination for bodies of water and the night. Mm, delicious! <laughs> there are so many lakes and rivers and the sea. Oh my god, the sea in this collection? Mm, delicious! And that's it for now. Thank you to the subscribers to this newsletter podcast. And mega thank you to my Patreons. Jorge, Larry, Rufi, Lucia, Katdufo, Katia, Ariadna, Manuel, and Victor. These are the coolest people. Mm, you all should know they are the coolest. Um, and everyone else, I remind you, you can join my Patreon at patreon.com slash Miriam Navarro Prieto. And if you're able and would like to, for as little as one euro or five fifty dollars a month, um, you can see more of my poems, my drawings, and there you can actually see the nipples <laughs> in the new drawings, not like on the prudish instagram and there i also share audios and videos um, from time to time about my creative process my archives that kind of stuff and finally um i ask you to subscribe to the newsletter if you haven't yet at tinyletter.com slash miriam dash navarro dash prieto uh, Remember to wait for the um, link Tiny Letter has to send you to your inbox and you have to open the email and click on the confirmation link. And also, also uh, you can also see my newsletter archive, go through my previous issues if you're in doubt about subscribing, which is fair. Um yeah, remember if you have a crush currently, uh, maybe, maybe, <laughs> why not send them uh, my previous newsletter issue titled Secret Pirate Nooks. Um, there's a beautiful poem in there uh, by Brooke Kolko, and you can always send this. Uh, to your crush and tell them no matter how many hairs their teen has, it's beautiful anyway. <laughs> so yes, please send. So yes, please send my newsletter slash dash po podcast to your crush. That would make me very happy. That's all. That's all. Yes, definitely. Um, please um, sign up for my fucking workshop, please. <laughs> If you're interested, or at least send it to a friend of. That's all. Hasta pronto.